so much, Dave. We seem to be slaves to technology these days. We've got our Blackberries, our cell phones, our iPods. It's gotten so bad for some people, it has become an unhealthy obsession. CBS News correspondent Michelle Miller reports. Hello, hello, baby, you called, I can't hear a thing. Everywhere you look, there's a telephone. Fingers are walking, thumbs are talking. You have internet, you have BBM, you have text messages, you have like, everything is right there. According to a recent study, 72% of cell phone owners send text messages, up 7% from just last year. If I don't have it on me, I feel like I'm not in control or in charge of my life. But too much texting has become what some doctors are calling an addiction. So anything that you can become obsessed with, and you do so much that you don't do the things that you need to do with family, friends, school, job, that can be an addiction. And texting absolutely can qualify as that. And teenage girls lead the charge. So my phone has like a 30 text limit, and then I have to delete it. And I usually delete it like every two or three hours. They average 100 messages a day. Shy Gonzalez is a textbook case. I can't even count. We just came back from Puerto Rico and they were texting all on the beach the whole time. And with excessive texting comes a number of problems, including lack of eating, isolation, and sleep deprivation. I sleep with my phone under, the pil uh, under my pillow. It's so kind of bad. If it vibrates, <laughs> yeah, then I wake up. But the problem isn't limited to teens. A Google search revealed thousands of hits related to adults who've run into trouble while texting. A Chicago cop is suing the city for two years of overtime pay for time spent on his BlackBerry after work. A woman in Staten Island, New York, fell down an open manhole while texting and walking. So all day long, from the minute I wake up until I shut it off at night and go to sleep, I'm on the phone constantly. Deanne Katsaros used her iPhone until the tendons connecting her thumb to her palm became so inflamed that she needed surgery and stitches to correct the problem. But with so many people hooked, at gmail.com, the question becomes how do you unplug and still stay connected? Michelle Miller, CBS News, New York. And joining us is David Greenfield, a clinical psychologist and founder of the Center for Internet Behavior. We're so glad you're here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. What do you make of this, this kind of explosion in especially texting? Well, texting in some sense, especially for the youth culture, or what I call the digital generation, is an, almost a new form of communication. I mean, it's unique, it's separate to them, it has its own language, and it's a shortcut. And it's also nonverbal and secretive. Mm. So it's a way of sort of creating a separate identity and a right. separate way of communicating. If, you, if you're looking around in your own household and you're looking at people who use these devices on an almost constant level, where is the line between abuse and addiction. Abuse is when a lot of us might fall into the category of abuse when we're using something a little bit too much or it's interfering with our lives in a small way. Mm -hmm. Addiction is when it interferes in a major way. Work, home, school, relationships. In some major sphere of your life there's a, a decrease in performance or, mm. or gratification. Right. You say that this sort of addiction or the potential addiction to these uh, handheld devices yeah. is often or in some ways similar to people who sit at slot machines. Yeah, like because texting and emailing, every once in a while you get something that's good, but you can't predict when you're going to get it and what it's going to be. And that's exactly the same reinforcement schedule that occurs in a slot machine, say. <laughs> so the brain gets a hit, mm -hmm. and because it's unpredictable and you don't know when and where, right. you are compelled to wait for it. And right. that's why people will stay on for hours and hours and hours and send hundreds and hundreds of messages. So it, it, you think of the people who sit there with their little bucket of nickels in front of the slot that's machine right. for 12 Ex hours The brain time. thinks it's the same thing. Same thing. That's right. Interpreted exactly the same way. We also heard about uh, one of the young ladies there, and I think this is also very common, kids especially sleep with their cell phones right. or put them under their pillows? That's right. And because it's a portable private technology mm -hmm. and a lot of parents aren't empowered to take care of that technology or they don't even know the kids have it in the room, right. they're not monitoring that. So, you know, my son, my own son told me the other day that he was up till 4.30 in the morning and I didn't realize it and I didn't take the phone away because if you let them in the room with that phone, right. they're going to abuse it. There's no way to avoid it. Maybe there should be some intervention there from the standpoint of if you have teens in the house and they have their own phones, 
they're on the charger in the kitchen. Absolutely. After, after such I and such a clock. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, how would you know if you were looking at your kid or if your kid says, <laughs> I was up till 4.30? How do you know if your kid is addicted to their phone? You know, basically you're looking for markers like you would with any other addiction. Is their school performance dropping? Are they, are they not get, getting up in the morning? Are they uh, performing poorly in, in social arenas? Mm -hmm. Are they more um, sleep deprived? Because mm -hmm. that's what we see a lot with kids. Right. Or are they developing some physical uh, tendon issues with yeah. their thumbs, believe it or not? And then there's a whole other issue of pictures and there's a whole thing in the, in the paper today yeah. about kids and pictures well, the, and the trips. The thing is that the child pornography laws were not written when we had cell phones and texting technology. So what's happening is a lot of these kids are sending images that are pornographic in nature mm. and are of underage individuals. Right. So when they're, these, these uh, images... Which goes back to the secretive stuff that exactly. you talked about. Exactly. And before. they don't realize what it is. And mm. then, of course, they're subject to being charged under these laws. So right. it's very scary. This is a cautionary time, right? Dr. David Greenfield, very good stuff. Thanks very much. Thank We're you. going to continue this discussion tomorrow with questions from our viewers. A panel of early show experts will address your 